Welcome to the DFS Fet Shop. Uh, for those of you that are going to be watching on YouTube, uh, you are inside right now a live uh, feed going on in our Facebook group. This is where the, the all the, the day ones are. Uh, we also have some paid uh, subscribers in here as well. Uh, I'll be uploading this video to YouTube. This is where we're going to go through um, our, our basic daily formatting of the show. Uh, we're going to get into the point totals. We're going to do some player pricing. We're going to look at all of those things uh, as we break down uh, tomorrow's slate, uh, look at the point totals, and also go into in, in depth about last night's slate. Really, really wild um, oscillated games. The, the, the highest score of all of the, the players was 58.25 DraftKings point. Not a huge uh, night from anyone that we saw, but let's go ahead and jump into uh, the core for review. Now, those of you that have been following the show, you you over in the website, you're here um, in the Facebook group, or you're even on YouTube, you know about the core four system. This is where I take the four guys that I think that are going to uh, be able to perform the best, not the best four guys, because I don't take the four most expensive guys, but the guys that I think are going to be able to perform the best. And uh, what I do is I, I roster these guys, come up with two other plays, some industry plays, two other plays that are going to be uh, plays the NBA gives me. And once you get into the website, into the group, you'll get more information on that about the core four uh the whole deal and also uh, our complete roster construction. So let's go ahead and do a quick review. And I do this only to provide the checks and balances that it takes to get you to trust me as an everyday uh, profitable DFS player. I'm going to show you my wins. I'm going to show you my losses. Right today, tonight wasn't very a uh, very good night for the core four. We're going to go through that. Uh, we're going to start uh, with Isaiah Thomas. He was a, a point guard that I really liked on this slate going up against his former team uh, playing at Sacramento. I, I knew that the pace of the game was probably going to be um, uh, predicted by the best player uh, on the court. And I thought that in this opportunity, the best front, the best backcourt player was going to be uh, Isaiah Thomas. Now, he did not, you know, kill kill value. He didn't crush value, but he, he did pretty good. Uh, he, he ended up scoring uh, 37 DraftKings points. Uh, a couple points less than what we expected from him. We needed 38.6 in order to make that 6x value. But all in all, it was a pretty decent game from him. Now, Boogie was another number, another story. Uh, at 10.7K, we needed Boogie to keep up his average over the last three games of 65 points. Well, <clears throat> he got 53. So he fell he fell quite uh, uh, far below uh, that, that threshold that we had set for him. Uh, going into into the core four, the next guy we're gonna get into, Jonas Valanciunas. This motherfucker stole 5.5k from me. 5.5k stole from me, and uh, you you was very close to being a snowflake of the night, but some cats in the in the sweatshop in the Facebook page, you know they they they, they were like, yo, don't do it to him, don't do it. To him. It was your fault. You jumped out on the limb. You knew that man. You know. Uh, uh, was at risk of being a snowflake, and you rostered him anyway and put him in your core four. So that, that's me. I'll eat that. That's my bad. So uh, he goes out at 5.5K and scores 18 DraftKings points. Horrible game from Jonas Valanciunas and a poor representation of my core four. The next guy we're going to get into was the crown jewel of the core four. Had a very great game. It was Rajon Rondo at 6.5K. We needed him to get 38 points in order to make that 6-8 value. Well, guess what? He went and got 58 points tonight. Uh, very, very nice play from him. He was at about 11% ownership. I believe Boogie was just around 20%. Jonas Valanciunas was way low. I'm talking 8% owned. And IT2 was about 14% owned. So these guys were in position. If, if this core hits, I'm good everywhere because most of my other plays were good. Um, but you, you're going to have that. The way this thing is set up, it is four out of ten slates. You hit on your core, you're going to be a profitable player. So, this salary, this, the salary, 30.2k in salary, uh, I sent that out there and it brought me back 166 DraftKings points. We needed it to bring back at least 186 DraftKings points, so we fell about 20 below the desired mark when it came to this core four. So, 
one for the one for the sharks, zero for me. That's okay. The uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the four, the feature four players, the four most talked about, tweeted about guys in the DFS sweatshop on Twitter and talked about in the uh, in the Facebook group. And these are the guys that have been talked about for good and some bad reasons. The first player we're gonna talk about is the who that scored all them points over there player of the night and this goes out to Matt Barnes now I shouted out Matt Barnes uh, inside the Facebook group uh, when I was talking about the core four and how we were gonna attack Boston rebounding now I don't want to take too much credit uh, I don't want to take too much credit for that play because I only put him in one lineup that I entered five times that didn't cash because I had some other bums in there but I mean you had to think that uh, Matt Barnes was gonna be able to have a decent game he was at point nine percent owned, less than one percent of the people owned Matt Barnes and he went out and, and for that very small salary he brought back 46.5 DraftKings points excellent game from Matt Barnes and that's why he is tonight's who that scoring all them points over there player of the night the next guy is the how did I miss that play this goes this is a guy who we should have been on him we knew the matchup wasn't as bad as it seemed we also knew the ownership was probably going to be low because he didn't have a great game out, but he was a very good player. Uh, this is Al Horford, man. Al Horford went out and scored uh, 58 DraftKings points. Now, this guy was only 3% owned. So if you had Al Horford in your lineup, I guarantee you were closer uh, to the cash line than most people. So very good game from Al Horford. The next guy is going to be the heat check player tonight, and, it's, and it's, I'm very proud. Whenever the heat check player tonight is not some 10K, 12K player, but he's somebody that I had in my core four, right? And that's Rajon Rondo. Rajon Rondo, excellent game from him. He was 6.5K, went out at 11% in ownership, and scored, of course, 58.25 DraftKings points, led all players in scoring. That was a huge uh, 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 game from him, and if you had him, and Al Horford in your lineups, you were very close uh, to that winner's circle that we talked about. Now, there's always, you know, there's always that one motherfucker, you know, it's that one motherfucker who fucks up your lineup. And tonight, it could have been so many different people, but I could not ignore. When I look back at, at, at the, uh, the player performances, and I look at the box scores, and I watched a little bit of the games because I, I came home from work and I turned on some games, watched some condensed games. Man, Dwight Howard, you a motherfucking snowflake with your snowflake ass. How the fuck your big size 22 shoe wearing, 8 foot, 11 foot wingspan ass motherfucker. You can't go out there and you can't get more than 12.5 DraftKings points? Are you fucking kidding me? At 17% ownership, your big, long shoe, snowflake ass, you a motherfucking snowflake tonight. And you can go to bed with that shit, and you can wake up with that shit tonight with your snowflake ass. How the fuck you eight foot tall and, and can't get a double-double? See, I sh you should have been a snowflake last week when you had 20 points and nine rebounds. And you had nine rebounds for two quarters. Your snowflake ass. Fuck out of here, man. Tonight. But you're not dead to me, though. Because you're a supreme talent. You're going to be in better matchups. We threw the interception. It happens. We can get it back. We get the ball back. And we can drive down the field and score again tomorrow. That's what we're going to do. Now, let us go ahead and jump into a quick recap of last night's game. We're going to start... Uh, with the Orlando Magic taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, the Sixers were at home. And, you know, there's going to be a new rule in the sweatshop. Now, there's a few things that happen in the sweatshop that's law. One of them was attack Boston rebounding. That's law. You see what Matt Barnes did. Another one was something that I came to, uh, came to popularity with was we always rock with Kimba at home. That's law. The next one is, just play Joel Embiid. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Going against Whiteside, going against Boogie, going against uh, Anthony Davis. Just play. Just play him. Just just play Embiid. Play him until they give him the respect to where his salary is 11, 12K. 
until he, until he until he's one of the top uh, flight centers in the league, just play him. Play him B. That's law. Sadly, he's going to be out tomorrow, but we're going to get in that too. Now, on the Orlando side of the ball, man, we saw a pretty decent game from Aaron Gordon. He started off really hot. Uh, I think he had like 20, 20 points uh, in the first quarter, 20 drafting points in the first quarter. He had a really decent game uh, from Aaron Gordon. We saw that. Bismack Biombo played 32 minutes. Not a very good game from him. Uh, he only hit two shots the whole game, but he had 13 boards to go with four assists and one steal for him. A uh, pretty good game we saw from um, Evan Fournier. But for the, for where he was at, though, you kind of wanted a lot more uh, in the ways of uh, scoring from him. So we also saw uh, Nikolai Vucevic for 27 minutes. Now, he had a pretty decent game, uh, 12 points for him and 11 boards. That is a double-double, really nice game from him. Uh, on the Philadelphia 76ers side, man, Joel Embiid went the fuck off. This dude is this dude is ham. This dude went off. He 25 points for him, uh, 10 boards, so he did hit the double-double bonus. But the most, like, one of the coolest things about Joel Embiid is he can get assists, he can get blocks, he can get steals. And he doesn't really turn the ball over that much for a big man that sees that much usage. So that was a really good game from him. Uh, Julio Okafor had 16 points and 13 boards. Nice game from him. And they show that they can kind of coexist in this game. They really show that they can coexist. So that was a pretty good game uh, from him. The next game we're going to be getting into. <clears throat> hey, 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 thank, hey, thank y'all for being here too, man. I know it's late at night. But we getting it in. We grinding. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. It's the, it's the Sacramento Kings traveling to Boston to take on the Celtics. Now, we really thought, we know that we can attack Boston rebounding. And the initial idea was, yo, uh, Rudy Gay is going to be in play. And, of course, Boogie is going to dominate. But that's not really what happened, man. We saw uh, Matt Barnes come off the bench, man, and have an excellent game. This dude had 12 points. Uh to go with 16 boards. Matt Barnes, 16 rebounds in 30 minutes. Excellent game from him. Boogie did get 28 points uh, to go with 9 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1 steal. He also had 4 blocks. That was big, too. Not a great game from Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay had 13 points to go with uh, 3 assists, but he had 6 turnovers and 8 rebounds. It was respectable, but not, not what we were looking for when we attempted to roster Rudy Gay. Uh, we saw 13 points from uh, Darren Collison. You know, he likes to hit the chicks, so we don't really roster him too much. Um, so not not too much to speak of on the uh, on the Sacramento Kings side. But as far as the Boston Celtics went, uh, we saw a nice game from Al Horford, man. He had 26 points, uh, six blocks, which was what really separated him uh, from everybody else. Two steals, uh, three assists, and eight rebounds. Very nice game from him. Avery Bradley had 15 and nine. Pretty nice game from him. Isaiah Thomas, 20 points to go with seven boards, two steals, and three rebounds. Pretty nice game from him. Jay Crowder is waking up. Jay Crowder is coming into the zone. I think that we can definitely look to roster Jay Crowder going forward. I mean, this dude shot 50% from the field last night. Pretty good game. Uh, three out of five from three-point land. That's pretty nice. So we can definitely look to Jay Crowder. I think he's going to find a stroke, and he's going to like supplant Avery Bradley as the you know third scoring option on the team. Because now you, first you've got Isaiah Thomas, and you've got uh, Horford. I think Jay Crowder is going to move past uh, Avery Bradley. The next game we're going to be getting into. <clears throat> is the Lakers traveling to Toronto to take on uh, the Raptors. Now, this game left a lot to be desired, uh, especially uh, at the shooting guard position for on both sides, but definitely for uh, DeMar DeRozan, man. DeMar DeRozan did not have a very good game. The game kind of blew out anyway, but he played 30 minutes and had 16 points and did nothing else peripherally. I mean, he has six assists and four rebounds and two steals, but... I mean, 16 points from him. We need him to do a lot of a lot of other things for him to, you know, really make the value at the 8.1k. Uh, we saw a nice game from Kyle Lowry. If you saw um, the core four 
where they was like, yo, what you going to do uh, with, if I can't get up to Isaiah Thomas, what do I do? Or, or if I want to pay up more, Lowry. Lowry was the player. And every lineup, I had either Lowry or Isaiah Thomas. I should have had them both in them together. That would have been better. But uh, Lowry had 24 points to go with seven assists, four rebounds, and one steal. He did have four turnovers. Uh, shot 66% from three and eight from 12, eight for 12 from the field. Nice game from him. Uh, Lucas Noguera came off the bench and had 13 points, a couple steals, and three rebounds. Pretty nice game from him. Uh, we saw Norman Powell started the game uh, because Damari Carroll was out. And Powell did have 16 points. He had seven boards, two assists. Pretty nice game from him, and he shot 50% from the field. Uh, on the Lakers side, man, we didn't really see a good game from anybody, really. I mean, Brandon Ingram gave you a lot of what you were looking for him to finally do. I mean, he did shoot 50% from the field and scored 17 points. That is so far a career high for him, so that was a nice game from Brandon Ingram. Uh, Jordan Clarkson had 14 and two steals to go with a rebound and an assist. Uh, Sweet Lou Williams had 13 points to go with four assists and one rebound. Not a very good game from anybody uh, on the Lakers' side. So, I see... The funny thing about the Lakers, man, is they play so deep. You know, I talk about it all the time, how this team is coached by, you know, the guy that was an assistant coach, Luke Walton, with the Golden State Warriors. If there's anything that he learned was that you play guys deep. You give everybody 20 minutes, get everybody 24 minutes, and that's what they do. So it's really hard to, uh, to roster any of the Lakers with confidence unless you think they're in a position to dominate, you know. Uh, next game we're going to get to is going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves. At my New York Knicks, uh, surprisingly, a man Melo played 34 minutes and had 21 points, uh, three steals, five rebounds, three assists. He really got involved in every phase of the game. Really nice game from him. How about Kyle O'Quinn? Th that was get back. That was a, that was get back for the, when you rostered him when he first started, and then you talk shit about him and he was dead to you because he damn sure was dead to me. I had no inclination to start him tonight, but he had an excellent game. Uh, went out. And had uh, what 13, yep, excuse me, 20 points to go with uh, two blocks, 13 boards, two assists. Really good game from uh, Kyle Quinn. That was a nice game from him. Uh, Justin Holiday had 13 points to go with seven rebounds and uh, three steals. Nice game from Justin Holiday. We also saw Derek Rose, uh, 24 points from him, five rebounds and four, five, five rebounds and five assists. That was a nice game. From Derrick Rose, uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis, he definitely disappointed a lot of people, man. We had 11 points for him, uh, 5 rebounds, 3 assists, 4 turnovers, not a very good game. Chris Stapps shot 2 for 12 from the field, that's 16%, not a good game uh, from Chris Stapps Porzingis at all. And these Knicks, they're pretty hard to gauge, man. It's very seldom that more than one of them are going to have a really nice game. It's like one guy usually gets off, and tonight it was Melo. It was Melo, Melo and O'Quinn. He, he, he definitely got off. Next game is going to be the Cleveland Cleveland uh, Cavaliers going to Chicago to take on the Bulls. Um, I mean, we saw LeBron for 44 minutes, and if I told you that LeBron was going to play 44 minutes, I mean, how what did you think he would do? Not a very great game from LeBron. He had 27 points, uh, eight turnovers, 13 rebounds, and uh, Excuse me, 13 assists and five rebounds. So he did get the double double bonus, but at that price, you need him to damn near get a triple double or drop 40. So it wasn't a very good game from him. Uh, Kevin Love had nine boards to go at one steal and 15 points for him. We saw a kind of decent game from Kyle Lowry, excuse me, from Kyrie Irving. He had 20 points to go with eight assists and uh, six rebounds. Pretty good game from him. Didn't see much from J.R. Smith. Uh, Channing Fry came off of the bench and had 11 points and two rebounds to go with a steal. Uh, tonight was tonight was definitely a, a crazy a crazy slate of games tonight. Nobody really like went ham, you know. Nobody really went ham, and we all rostered guys that we thought would go ham. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was it was pretty crazy. But on the Bulls side, we saw Jimmy Butler for 41 minutes. That dude is a minute monster. He is playing so many minutes. He had 26 points. Eight boards and six assists, only one turnover for for Jimmy Butler, and he had three steals and two blocks. He filled up the stat sheet. Really nice game from Jimmy Butler. Uh, Tosh Gibson had 23 points 
and 11 boards. Very nice game from him. He also had five assists and a steal and only one turnover for him as well. Uh, Dwayne Wade had a pretty decent game, 24 points to go with four assists, five rebounds, and uh, he shot 11 uh, for 23. That's 47 percent. That's right around where you need Dwayne Wade in order for him to be successful. But the story of this game was definitely uh, Rajon Rondo, man. Triple-double for him almost. Had 15 points um, to go with 12. Two. He did triple-double. 15 points, 12 uh, assists, and 11 rebounds for him. He also had three steals and one block. Very nice game. Only three turnovers. When he's playing like that, man, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to not roster him, especially under 7K. We've got to start looking. This is vintage Rondo that we're getting. This is not like you know, uh, crazy head case Rondo. I think he's pretty happy and he's playing good ball. So we definitely can uh, look to him uh, going forward. The next game we're going to talk about is the LA Clippers uh, going to New Orleans to take on the Pelicans. So uh, somebody in the chat said, you got to start rostering point guards against Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. Cause Kyrie defense is no defense at all. Not at all. Uh, Let's go ahead and start with uh, on the Clippers side of the ball. We saw Luke Mamba Mute for 32 points. Ooh, and he had, I mean, 32 minutes, and he had 15 points, two blocks, uh, two steals, five rebounds. Pretty good game from him. Blake Griffin got in the double double with 27 and 10. Uh, DeAndre Jordan had 13 points, 13 rebounds to go with six points. We also saw uh, a double double from Chris Paul, 17 uh, points, 13 assists, and eight rebounds. He flirted with the triple double there. And the coach's son, in 20 minutes off the bench, scored two points. I'm so sad for you if you rostered his punk ass tonight. Not a good game from him. If he was a starter, he would definitely be a, a snowflake. <clears throat> On the New Orleans uh, Pelican side of the ball, not a great game from Anthony Davis. That up 11K, on that, that wasn't a very good game for him at all. I mean, 21 points. Uh, four assists, six rebounds, not a good game. And he played 32 minutes. When I saw the stat line, I was like, man, I'm going to watch this New Orleans game. And I saw the stat line before I saw, you know, the minutes. I was like, damn, he must have got hurt or something. But no, it was just probably just a blowout, and he didn't he didn't play very well. Uh, we had 15 points from Etuan Moore to go with four rebounds and two assists. That was pretty decent. Terrence Jones scored 14 points, uh, grabbed nine boards. That was a decent game for Terrence Jones. That price on him is going back down as it needs to. Uh, the next play, excuse me, the next game uh, we're going to be talking about is going to be the <laughs> the Detroit Pistons going to the Atlanta Hawks, and they beat their ass. We talked about the snowflake. What is snowflake ass? Now, we're going to start on the Detroit side of the ball. We had another nice game. That is three nice games in a row from... Uh, <laughs> From Contavious Caldwell Pope. And I'm telling you, if you keep on rostering him, he's going to let you down big. But we might as well ride the wave while it's still waving. He had 30 minutes. Uh, and in those 30 minutes, he had 23 points to go with eight rebounds and uh, one steal. Good game from Contavious Caldwell Pope. We saw Andre Drummond uh, grab a double double. He went up and came down with 14 rebounds. Uh, two assists, one steal, one block, and 14 points. Nice game from Andre Drummond. Uh, fairly decent game from Tobias Harris, but we needed to see more. He had 18 points, two assists, and seven rebounds. Um, Ish Smith, man. Ish Smith is, is just continuing to, to dish out dimes. And the sad part about it is uh, when Reggie Jackson comes back, he's going to instantly be way more in salary than Ish Smith will. So it's going to be harder to roster the point guard from the Detroit Pistons because it's not going to be Ish Smith anymore. It's going to be uh, it's going to be Reggie Jackson. So uh, 11 points for Ish Smith, 13 assists. The beautiful thing about a game like this is he only scored 11 points and had 13 assists, but he only had one turnover. So he didn't give uh, uh, very very few of those points back. He kept those with him because he only had one turnover and a steal. Good game from Ish Smith on the Atlanta Hawks side. Man, this game was a shit show for them, man. Um, the brightest spot on this team right now, the brightest spot on this team right now, and without Paul Millsap, is definitely Dennis Schroeder. The dude, I keep saying this, the dude has commanded the team. Uh, in the core four video, we talked about him, and he was somebody that I had my eye on and I really liked. He had 17 points to go with 11 assists. Nice game from him. And uh, Mike Muscala had 11 points with 
two rebounds, and one assist. We also saw Tim Hardaway Jr. off the bench, had 11 points, and uh, Chris Humphrey had a tad 10 points off of the bench as well. I'm talking about Bazemore, who is dead to me, had seven points. That's why he's dead to me. Thabo Cephalosha played 16 minutes, had five points. Horrible game from these cats. I mean, Atlanta is getting harder and harder to figure out as the season goes on. Now, we knew Paul Millsap was going to be out, so it's going to affect the team. But, I mean, come on, man. You didn't, you didn't think that it was going to be that bad. They were going to lay an egg. Uh, next game is going to be the Washington Wizards traveling to San Antonio to take on the Spurs. Now, uh, most people, like I said uh, in last night's video, when you see John Wall, or when you see San Antonio, you think automatic fade. Oh, I can't play anybody that's going against San Antonio. But, no, nah, man, there's some guys that are elite, superior talents that you can definitely roster against the San Antonio Spurs. And I'm going to tell you, John Wall was one of them. Uh, he went out in 37 minutes, had 17 points, to go with 15 assists, 2 rebounds, 3 steals, 3 turnovers. Very nice game from John Wall. Uh, 21 points from Martin Gortat, had 18 boards. Very nice game from him. We saw Otto Porter for 36 minutes, and he had 15 points, 4 steals, which are nice, 2 assists, and 12 boards from him. We also saw a fairly decent game. Uh, from Bradley Beal, he had 23 points and did nothing else in the peripherals. Nothing else. I'm talking about not a rebound, not an assist, not a steal. That's horrible. This dude had more real-life points than he had fantasy points. That's horrible. That's bad. That's bad. The San Antonio Spurs, uh, we saw Kawhi Leonard for, 50, for 34 minutes. He shot 50% from the field, finished with 23 points. To go with five boards and uh, two assists with two steals. Nice game from him. LaMarcus Aldridge, man. This dude is continuing to underwhelm. The price has got to keep going down for LaMarcus Aldridge. He hasn't been playing well at all. 19 points, uh, one block, five rebounds. Not a great game from him at all. We saw a nice game from Paul Gasol, though. Ten rebounds to go with <clears throat> 19 points from him. He also had a steal and two blocks. Nice game from Paul Gasol. Danny Green. Uh, flirted like he was a good player with us for the first week since back from his injury. He's like one more missed uh, layup from being dead to me. Danny Green, with your punk ass up. Now, Patty Mills, in uh, 27 minutes, had 10 points to go with uh, 8 assists and 4 rebounds. Pretty nice game from Patty Mills. The next game that we're going to be getting into... <laughs> Yeah, is the uh, Denver Nuggets. And this is the last game on the slate. This game ended not too long ago. Uh, Denver Nuggets at home against the Houston Rockets. Now, this was one of those nights where I just decided not to roster Harden. And I'm so glad that I didn't because he didn't have, like, a bad basketball game. He just didn't have the James Harden game that we need to justify that almost 12K in salary. In 33 minutes, uh, Harden had 20 points, uh, 7 assists, and 6 rebounds, 5 turnovers, which were big. So Harden was really not worth the price of admission tonight. He shot 37% from, from, from the field, 1 for 5 from 3. Not a good game from James Harden. Uh, Clint Capella, he goes out and snags a double-double, right? Now, if you know, if you've been following the show, you know I was on this. I was on Clint Capella like a motherfucker the other night. Had him in my core four, and that's why when you have these feelings that a guy's gonna play well, you've got to pay attention to him and not ignore him the next time they come out and play. Clint Capella was a very nice play tonight. He had 13 points, uh, one block, one assist, 10 rebounds. Nice game from him. It was a double double. Ryan Anderson has continued his hot shooting. He was he only made four field goals, but they were all three pointers. He missed a shot inside of three, and the rest was 50% from and over all three pointers. Ryan Anderson is in the zone right now. He is shooting out of this world. I saw him shoot from damn near half court during this game. Ryan Anderson is in a, another world right now shooting the ball. You've got to take advantage of that going forward. He finished with 18 points, six rebounds, and three assists with a steal. Nice game from him. Trevor Ariza had a hot start to this game in the, in the first half, but he kind of cooled off in the second when he finished with 16 points, five steals, which were big, seven rebounds, and uh, um, three assists. Pretty nice game from him. Um, Sam Decker, man. Sam Decker is the thing. Off of the bench, 
In 27 minutes, he had 17 points to go with four rebounds. They trust this guy to play well. Nice game from Sam Decker. On the Denver Nuggets side, we saw Danilo Gallinari for uh, 34 minutes. He had 16 points, five boards, one assist. Not a great game from him. Uh, we also saw Kenneth Reed uh, for 22 minutes. He had 14 points and 10 boards. A nice double-double for Kenneth Reed. If you had him in your lineups, you definitely like that. Uh, we also saw Will Barton. He was back in the lineup, and he scored 17 points to go get seven rebounds and uh, five assists. Nice game from Will Barton. Wilson Chandler, man, has been his his, his regular self. I don't know what he drank in the offseason or what he's done or what's happening, but Wilson Chandler is turning into, like, a top 50 player, man. Dude is fucking balling. He had 24 points, uh, one steal, two assists, four rebounds. Nice game. Nice game from Wilson Chandler in 29 minutes. This is off the bench. Dude's balling, man. Uh, Jameer Nelson, not a great game from him. Didn't really see too much to speak of uh, from this standpoint. Now, let's go ahead, while I've got your attention, let's go ahead and jump into uh, the point totals for tomorrow's uh, nine game, but really an eight game slate on the main draft Kings. Uh, they've only got eight games on deck for us. So, and we're going to talk about that. And this, when we go into each game, game by game, and we talk about game flow, we talk about point totals, who's home, who's away. What we're doing is we're establishing our player pool in our heads. I'm going to, I'm going to walk away from this segment with y'all with at least 25 guys, like a player pool in my head that I'm going to use to extract my core four. So let's go ahead and jump into the first game on the slate. Uh, this won't be playable on the DraftKings main slate, but just for the sake of it being an NBA game that we should be paying attention to, uh, it's the Brooklyn Nets going to Milwaukee. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they just played each other not too long ago. And this is a 217-point total with Milwaukee giving up 10. Uh, Brooklyn is the uh, road dog. So that kind of says to me, I don't think this this game is. I think this game is gonna be a blowout, and I'm kind of glad that it's not on the main slate, because with every 9K player you have, that's another guy that you should have rostered that went the fuck off. So I'm glad there's no Giannis on the the DraftKings main slate for me to worry about. I'm glad. So, of course you got to go with the usual suspects in this game. Uh, Sean Kilpatrick from the Brooklyn Nets side. I I, I would definitely uh, like. Robin Lopez in this game. I think he's going to be a really nice play in this game. Uh, also, you can look to Malcolm Brogdon if the game blows out. Uh, you, John Henson has been balling out of control lately. The last three games, he's been playing very well. So I like John Henson in this game. If I had to roster anybody from the Brooklyn side, it would be, uh, I would look at Bojan Bogdanovic a little bit. I would look at um, uh, Brooke Lopez, of course. Trevor Booker can definitely be in play. On the Milwaukee side, I do not like um, Jabari Parker. I love Giannis in this game, and I also like John Henson if he does get the start. The next game is going to be the Minnesota Timberwolves going to Charlotte to take on the Hornets. And you already know. You already know how I feel when it's time to go to Charlotte. The man is due. Sometimes you just sometimes you just got to put... You gotta throw caution to the wind, and 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 you and you put your eggs in the basket because it's time. The man is due, Kimber. Kimber. We need the hoes to come out, and we need you to ball. Let's go to the beehive. Let's get it. I love Kimber tomorrow. The price is going down a little bit, and when I like Kimber in a fast-paced, up-tempo game, I got to like somebody else, and it's not gonna be the usual suspect that you think about because normally I said Kimba Batum, Kimba um, uh, Marvin Williams who is out you know I like I like Cody Zeller a lot in this game I love Cody Zeller in this game if I'm gonna if I'm gonna stack Charlotte in any way it will be it will be Zeller and uh, and, and Kimba Walker and I do like Nick Batum as well I do like Nick Batum as well but I think he's gonna spend a lot of energy on defense uh, playing uh, Wiggins and Levine that I actually think we're going to see a really nice scoring game from uh, Kimball Walker tomorrow. Uh, this is a 206.5 point total with Charlotte being the home favorite. They're at home giving up 6.5 to the Minnesota Timberwolves. 
a Carl Anthony Towns, of course, is going to be a problem. You can always target uh, Charlotte Big Men. It's kind of cool that that he went and got um, – he, he, he didn't really have a great game out last night, Carl Anthony Towns, that is. He really didn't have a great game. So a lot of folks are really not going to be on him like that. He's really not going to be that high owned. So I kind of like Carl Anthony Towns tomorrow against against the Charlotte Hornets. The next game we're going to get into is going to be the Boston Celtics uh, going to Philadelphia to take on the 76ers. There's no Embiid. That is horrible. Uh, we do not have to. We, we cannot roster Joel Embiid tomorrow. Uh, we also know that Robert Covington could be out. That's why there's no point total yet for this game. So let's look at this from from a from a uh, from a addition by subtraction perspective. Okay. Now we've got we've got Embiid out, Okafor in, right? We're just coming off a good game. We've got Robert Covington out, so we may see a little more. Dario Saric, we may see a little more uh, Ersan Ilyasova, but I can tell you who I, that, there it is, there it is, just came up in the chat, I love Rashawn Holmes tomorrow, at 3.9k, I think that we can use Rashawn Holmes to get that 20, 23, 24, 25 points in order to build, to pay up in other spots, so I love Rashawn Holmes tomorrow, he's going to be one of my favorite cheapy plays and not a lot of people are going to be on them. They never are, bro. They never are. It's funny. They never are. Uh, I also, in this game, I like um, I like Avery Bradley to have a, a kind of a, a bounce back game. He always does well against shitty teams. And they, I mean, Philly is pretty much, without Joel B, they're a shitty team. So I definitely like um, uh, Avery Bradley tomorrow. Don't like, uh, don't like Isaiah Thomas as much as I did tonight. So that probably means he's going to go out and have a great game. So I definitely think that we can look to rostering. Um, we can definitely look to rostering uh, Isaiah Thomas tomorrow. We want to be wary of the blowout concerns. I think the floor should be fine. I think they mocked it and it's cool. So uh, Okafor is going to see some minutes. Um, Horford is going to be a decent play in this game. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of fantasy goodness because the guys that are going to be playing on the Philadelphia side are cheap as shit. I even like. Uh, Gerald Henderson, even though he's going to see some Avery Bradley defense, but at 3.5K, the price is, is so low that you can take a chance on him. So that, that Boston Philly game is going to be a game that I'm going to be targeting a lot. Until they get the, pri the, the, the prices right on the Philly players, and this is not for tomorrow because Embiid ain't playing, but until they actually get the prices right, because when Embiid is playing, uh, uh, Okafor is cheap as shit. Okafor is cheap when Embiid is playing because everybody knows nobody's going to take Okafor. What in on the back to back, the next game they play, Embiid sits, Okafor plays. He's still cheap. Okafor is still cheap. So I, I like him. I like him as a, as a cheap player tomorrow. The next game I'm going to get into is going to be the Atlanta Hawks traveling to the Toronto Raptors. This game does not yet have a, um, a point total associated with it. But because we know Millsap uh, might be out tomorrow again, so we want to get that news. We want to stay close to Twitter, follow the Atlanta beat writers, uh, follow the Toronto beat writers, make sure we know what's going on in this game. Uh, because we also saw Damari Carroll did not play, and that made way for Norman Powell to have a pretty good game last night. So in this game, uh, like Dennis Schroeder, I still like him. I think he can be a decent play, especially if... Um, if, uh, if Millsap is out, because somebody has to pick up that scoring punch, and Kent Bazemore is dead to me. Kent, B Baze he's, Kent Bazemore is dead to me. Uh, I like Kyle Lowry in this game. I think he can be a decent play. DeMar DeRozan, uh, I don't see DeMar DeRozan having one of those those forty crazy 40-point 40 games. That's what you need from DeMar DeRozan in order to make that value. Kent Bazemore is a pretty decent defender. Fabo Cephalosha is a really good defender with the second team, so I really don't see uh, a need to spend up that much to roster um, to roster uh, Demar Derozan tomorrow. Uh, as far as the bigs go, we've got Dwight Howard up against Jonas Valanciunas. Both of these dudes disappointed me last night, but if I had to take a big in this game, it would definitely be uh, Dwight Howard. I would go Dwight Howard over. Giannis Valanciunas. The next game we're going to get into is the value game of this late. This is where all of the value is going to be opening up. We've got the Los Angeles Lakers traveling to Memphis to take on the Grizzlies. First thing you think is Andrew Harrison 
at that four. At that, I think he's at right at 5K right now. Still cheap for a starting point guard in this league. Uh, Jermichael Green is a cheap uh, power forward. He's going to be banging up against a very active uh, Julius Randle. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. I actually would like Julius Randle more. But my favorite play from this game is going to be Marc Gasol. Marc Gasol at 7.1K. He is definitely a really good play in this game. I like him and, and that one on the Lakers side. If you want to go if you want to go cheaper, you know, I could see taking a shot on uh, Jordan Clarkson or even Brandon Ingram, but the pace is going to be so slow at the grindhouse that it's going to be hard uh, to, to, to have that huge scoring explosion that you're going to need from Sweet Lou Williams or from Jordan Clarkson because they don't do, you know, so many things in the peripheral uh, level. So uh, we also had somebody in chat talked about Troy Williams, brought him up. That's a pretty good play, too. I, did, I do like Troy Williams tomorrow. I do like, yeah, I like Troy Williams tomorrow. The next game we're going to get into is going to be the Chicago Bulls going to Dallas to take on the Mavericks. This is the lowest point total on the slate. It is a 189 point total with Chicago only giving up five points. So uh, Dallas is a home dog. Now, if they're going to if they're gonna beat them really bad, I think we can stay with Rondo. I think Rondo has a good game here. Uh I also like uh, Jimmy Butler in this game. He's going to be matched up against uh, Harrison Barnes for most of the game, so that makes me automatically not like um, Harrison Barnes at all on the Dallas side. If Salah Misery is going to start again and he's still cheap as shit, I may give him a whirl. Um, uh, Powell can be a decent play. Uh, at his price point, he's still very cheap. Um, not too much I like on the Chicago side other than Rondo. Because I, I'm not sure if the, if the game is going to blow out. I don't know. I don't know which which way to go with if the game is going to blow out. If it stays close, then that means I like I like guys like Wesley Matthews. That means if it's going to stay close, I like guys like Darren Williams. So that game is going to be a little hard to gauge. The next game we're going to get into is going to be the uh, Utah Jazz at home taking on the Denver uh, Nuggets. There is no point total as of yet uh, associated with this game, but. We do know that uh, Rudy Gobert is, is going to be playing, and we're not going to see um, Derek Favors. So that's probably going to be another start for either Boris Diaw or Trey Lyles. Uh, we know that Jokic on the Denver side may not uh, uh, play tomorrow, so we want to keep our eyes out for that. And uh, George Hill also may not be able to play, so that may put into play people like Shelvin Mack. Um, uh, you look at Gordon Hayward in this game against Denver, Wilson Chandler on the other side. But see, it's hard. a lot of us, we slept on this Utah team the other night uh, when Joe Johnson had a good game, Joe Ingles had a good game, and they're in a, a very similar situation in this game too. This, this is definitely a stackable team. The guy just said that in the chat. Ron Reyes, what's happening, bro? This is this is definitely a, a stackable game. So I, 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 look, I can look to stack Utah at the crib against Denver. The pace is going to be slow, but there's going to be a lot of missed shots, a lot of rebounds. Uh, the Denver Denver uh, bigs really don't stand a chance because, especially without Jokic. I mean, Fareed and Nurkic against Gobert, nah, I don't want no part of that. The last game, or the next game on the slate is going to be the Miami uh, Heat traveling to Portland to take on uh, the Trailblazers. This is a 214 and a half point total. If you know me, if you know the show, you know how I feel about Dame Lillard. Big game Dame Lillard. He is one of my favorite players in the league, but I will be so light on him tomorrow. I just don't see uh I just don't see the the the, the scoring coming from him that they're gonna need to 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 really make value against Miami Heat. Goran Dragic is a pretty good uh on on ball defender against point guards and the Miami team defense is pretty good uh locking down the point guard position. Now, don't get me wrong. He's an elite talent, but see, it's not like in Washington where nobody on the team can do what John Wall does, so you can't shut John Wall down. That's why John Wall is like that. Nobody can do what Anthony Davis can do, so so you can't shut Anthony Davis down. Well, on this team, CJ McCollum can pretty much do the same things that uh that uh uh, uh Dame can do. So if I think Dame's going to be in a tough matchup one-on-one, -on -one, I like CJ more than Dame. CJ is cheaper. CJ, to me, is the play on the Portland side in this game. 
Miles Plumley, the price is up to 6K. That's too much against Whiteside. Not saying that you can't ball against Whiteside, but not 6K, not in not an eight game slate. There's other places I can go. So I like McCullum on the Portland Trailblazer side. As far as Miami goes, I do like going Dragic. The price is still uh, reasonable, 6.7. And I do like Whiteside. Even though Portland plays pretty good team defense against uh, centers, I do like uh, Whiteside against uh, the Portland Trailblazers. The last game on the slate is going to be the Phoenix Suns traveling to the Oracle to take on the Golden State Warriors. This is the highest point total on the slate. It is 230 points with Golden State giving up 16 and a half. Now, there's a couple ways we can attack this slate and attack this game. Now, everybody everybody wants a late night hammer. And the purpose of the late night hammer is not just so you have a guy in the later game so you still feel like you have a chance to win. No. A late night hammer, if you, if you, if you notice and you follow trends, you can see that the later the game, the lower the ownership. That's just the way it is. People want to see their points right now. When I, if I create 10 lineups, most of them are going to have players that are in the early games. Just because we're creatures of habit, we just want to see our points right now. Now, I think that we can definitely take advantage of some spots in this game by just being patient and not spending up on the early games, but just paying up just a little bit uh, in the late games. And one of my favorite plays on this entire slate, you're never going to guess. Two guys, one of my, two of my favorite plays on this entire slate. Number one is Klay Thompson. I love Klay Thompson against the uh, Golden State first team. He's going to see uh, a little bit of Booker, and he's going to run circles. He's going to run screens, curl screens, and be knocking them down. I love uh, I love him in this game. I love Klay Thompson in this game. He didn't have a really good game out last time. Hasn't had a couple good games in a row, but... These guys, even though they may blow teams out, they still they still um, stay on the court for, for, for a little while. They still get 30 minutes. So I like Klay Thompson in this game. On the Phoenix side, my favorite play there uh, would definitely be Alex Lynn and Brandon Knight. I like the guys that are going to be playing against the Golden State second team. You can attack the Golden State second team. They are not, they are not as good as they have been. Do I like Bledsoe? Kind of, but not enough to pay up that much salary in a potential blowout situation. Well, I think a pretty much for sure blowout situation. So the only place I would be going in this game on the uh, Phoenix side would be Alex Lynn or, um, and or Brandon Knight. On the Golden State side, I think Draymond is in play. Uh, of course, Durant is in play because, I mean, it has to blow out some kind of way. So now, yeah, if you, if you, now if you got, if you got um, Curry shooting a bunch of threes and blowing them out, then everybody else is not going to be able to make value. But if they, if they, if Kevin Durant is involved, it can definitely be a uh, a, a, a quick blowout in this game. So I do like Draymond Green and I like Klay Thompson. Those would be the only guys I would really be rostering in the, as a late night hammer uh, on the Phoenix side. Well, this has been your DFS Jerusalem. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at DFS Jerusalem. This video was filmed live in the uh, DFS Sweatshop Insider Facebook group. It's going to be uploaded to YouTube very soon so that you all who are not a part of the group can still see what's going on in the sweatshop. But if you want that exclusive daily access to the spreadsheets, the player pools, the core four, which is what this whole thing is built around, the core four roster building structure, uh, if you want to get involved in all of that, go ahead hit up the website. It is www.dfssweatshop.com. Go hit it up, register, uh, and, and, and tomorrow, you know, you know the model is in the sweatshop. Always, always keep it 300.